So in The Mandalorian Season 3, we finally got to see who saved Grogu. And no, it wasn't Anakin Skywalker coming in and slicing everyone to oblivion, or was it Darth Sidious doing the same? Nor was it perhaps someone else like Quinlan Voss, who we know from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show is actually saving younglings and helping them find a new place. But rather, it was Jedi Master Kaleran Beck. Now, Kaleran Beck is a Jedi Master who is also known by the nickname the Sabred Hand. He supervised Padawans as they went through the Jedi Trials. With the help of protocol droid AD-3 and astromech droid LXR-5, Beck has also served aboard the starship Athelia. The character was originally introduced in the 2020 game show Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge. This was a show for kids, and it was kind of like what you would see on YTV back in the day. You can find the episodes on YouTube if you want to watch them. Now, Ahmed Best is the actor who portrayed Kaleran Beck, and he's also the same actor who played Jar Jar Binks. Now, we know he got a lot of hate and backlash for his role playing Jar Jar from a lot of critics. Now, I myself was nine years old, and I thought Jar Jar was funny and goofy, and you know that was his part in the role. That was what he was supposed to be. But for him, he took it really hard, and I'm glad to see that he now gets a role that he identifies more with as a cool Jedi Master, and above all, saving Grogu. So while we don't know too much about him, there are some things that I can break down in this episode, especially regarding his lightsaber fighting style and his force abilities, and exactly how he's going to be taking Grogu into an adventure that I think a lot of us could enjoy. So in the episode called The Foundling, which is episode 4 of season 3 of The Mandalorian, Kaleran Beck helps Grogu escape from the Jedi Temple during Order 66. And while the stories and lore regarding him have yet to be created, and I'm sure we're going to get books and comics galore, what I can tell you are the things that we see from him in this episode, in this scene, during the flashbacks of Revenge of the Sith. So, okay, first of all, he uses two lightsabers, one green, one blue. Much like what Anakin did against Dooku in Attack of the Clones for a very brief moment, as Anakin wasn't skilled enough at that time with two. So using two blades... This is called Jarkai, and it was a subform of Neman. This is the sixth form of lightsaber combat. The technique involves wielding two lightsabers, one in each hand, like we see, with one blade being used for attacking, and the other one more so for defending or parrying. There were many Jedi that used Jarkai as well, including Ahsoka and Sarah Keto. Now, while I don't know who Kaleran's master was at the Jedi Temple, and he seems to be older at this time, which means that he's probably outgrown his master at this point, I would have to assume that Jedi Master Sindrelic did have a helping hand. Now, Sindrelic, of course, played by Nick Gillard, who I had an awesome time interviewing and chatting with. You can find it on the channel, or you can go check out his channel at Gillard Stunts, was the lightsaber teacher and master of the Jedi Temple, proficient in all seven lightsaber fighting styles. He would help students achieve their sword mastery with a lightsaber, and I think it was through this help that Kaleran Beck became so proficient in his dual blades, which is no easy feat. You require a masterful amount of the Force to be able to control both blades and be aware of them at the same time, to know where each one's position is while in battle so as to not cut your own limbs off is a very difficult task in dangerous situations. I was observing Kaleran Beck's movements and he's not really twirling as much as let's say Anakin or somebody else who uses a much more fluid like movement of swinging their saber around, but rather he used very energy efficient lightsaber strikes to reflect the blasts back to the 501st clone troopers. If you notice, he doesn't really waste much energy by swinging around here and there. He just knew where the blasts were and where they would be for his blade to meet it. That's a very, very masterful Jedi. I think Kaleran Beck is definitely a high-ranking master, however, just not a council member. But then again, neither was Master Sindrelig or many of the others, like Qui-Gon Jinn. Now, according to the Temple show, his force powers include levitating rocks, which is like literally any Jedi in Star Wars, so that's not saying much at all. But he also apparently has a proficiency in communicating with others through the Force. So I'm thinking perhaps he was close to Grogu before this moment, like not physically, but they're emotionally close or they were good friends or something like that. And he sensed that maybe Grogu was in danger, bringing him to the top of the elevator for his little buddy to meet him. I think the journey and story of Grogu is just about to begin and we're about to see a ton of it take off in the next four episodes with flashbacks. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if this season of The Mandalorian is really just about Grogu and understanding his backstory and how he survived Order 66, and eventually how he came into the hands of Moff Gideon, which in turn, you know, what happens to Kaleran Beck. 
I think we could see some major adventures with Kalaren and Grogu. However, ultimately, he will probably die as Moff Gideon has eventually got his hands on Grogu like we saw in season one. Now, I think we could even see a spin-off show or maybe even a cartoon if they want to do that, but I think live action would be fun of their time together. So as to just not digress from the Mandalorian even more than they already have done this season. Right, we're already halfway through the season, and I don't feel like all that much has really happened yet, compared to perhaps the other ones. Now, if we remember when Ahsoka probed Grogu's mind during Season 2 of The Mandalorian, we saw that he had lost his memory at some point. Something got very dark. So this could have been intentional, or a reaction to something that happened to him. Maybe he bumped his head, maybe the Empire did it to him, Dr. Pershing, or perhaps someone did it to save him. My theory is that Kalaren wiped Baby Yoda's mind to save him and potentially other force sensitives. I believe Gideon wanted to find as many force sensitive beings that he could to further his testing with Dr. Pershing's cloning techniques and research in order to harvest the midichlorians within their blood. More hosts means more samples for Gideon, as force sensitives weak enough as younglings to not fight back hard are very difficult to find. It's not like he can just, you know, go track down Luke or a very powerful Jedi Master and be like, hey, can I get a blood sample, please? At least, you know, in the current timeline. So speaking of timelines, there's a 30 year gap between this moment in Order 66 and the events of The Mandalorian, maybe even a little bit more, 32 years or so. So that means that Moff Gideon was probably in his 20s around this time, if we're going to assume he's like in his mid 50s or we could say he's in his 30s, whatever, if he's 60, just like Vader was 22 at this time during Order 66. So whoever got Grogu would have to probably do that a little bit from now, because once Kalaren blasted off into hyperspace, there's really no way of tracking him or knowing where he went. So I'm wondering if he went to some sort of a meetup spot that maybe Yoda had for everybody if, you know, things really went bad at the temple. I want to know if they had, you know, a special connection. Maybe Claren Beck was Grogu's master. Who knows? And I know a lot of people are thinking, well, Yoda should have been the master of Grogu, but that's not necessarily true because once you get a seat on the council, you can't take any more Padawans. It's actually kind of forbidden because you're just far too busy with council dealings that you just don't have time to train anybody. There were some exceptions here and there, just like Kiari Mundi had exceptions to, you know, have several wives because of his people going extinct, but we're not really going to talk about those. I think perhaps Kalaren could have been Grogu's master, and if he wasn't, then I really wonder who was. I think there's a huge story to be told here. In fact, I think you know they could have even started The Mandalorian Season 3 off with this flashback, and we could have just gotten the next several episodes kind of going in and out of Grogu's experiences and what happened to him that brought him into the hands of Moff Gideon, and how that affects him today compared to Order 66 with his abilities in the Force. Was he much stronger? Was he trained to be much stronger? Could he use a lightsaber? Probably not, but something happened to him where he he just grows really tired using the force and he's just not as powerful as he used to be. So a lot of questions need to be answered here and I'm excited for them to tell us with this new storyline which honestly has me more intrigued than anything in The Mandalorian this season. Let me know what you think about Kalaren Beck saving Grogu. Would you rather it have been Jocasta Nu or somebody else perhaps? Maybe Quinlan Vos? Or are you happy with this outcome? I personally think it's pretty cool. I'm pretty neutral to it. I'm excited to see where the story is going to go from here and to understand their overall plan for everything. Thanks for watching today's theory video and explanation. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you all in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.